package was just delivered and it's the Pro Track Digital Bathroom and Kitchen Scale. And it comes with two pieces and it was only $29.95 plus shipping handling, handling of about $5. So it's about $34 from HSN. So I just I'm just opening up the package and I always recommend you get a scale to weigh your food. I know a lot of um fitness people say, Oh, I don't bother weighing myself because I'm a freaking pro at it, dude. I just think that you should be mindful of eating. You just eat mindfully, you know, and uh just make sure you feel your center. Make sure you feel how full you are and then you will know that you are there. Okay, whatever. Okay, sometimes I feel stuffed as a pig and will still eat because guess what? It's called a food addiction, dummy. So, <laughs> side note, I think I went kind of crazy there. <laughs> but anyway, this food scale... It's great because you, you don't, you know, if you're going off how full you are, some people can eat more than other people. So they don't think that they've eaten as much. It's good to weigh in. So one gram, I mean, 28 grams is an ounce. So if you want, for example, um, um, if you want three ounces of something or four ounces, you would just four times 28. But it has here the dig the units. So it will give you grams and all of that. And then, of course, uh, you can look at your the back of your, on your food label. If you're eating a half a cup of oats, that's 43 grams. If you set your half a cup here, um, and, and you see the zero, then boom, you put, pour your oats in there. And if it says 43 grams, you know you have got that half cup. So it's really good to use the scale. And sometimes I've tested it and I've put filled half of a level, half a cup, leveled it off. And then I um, had another container on the scale, put the half a cup of oats in there and it was actually like 50 grams. So it was over. So that's why it's good to weigh your food and it's good to weigh yourself. Because when you're first getting started, it's it's good to reward yourself. And if you don't know where you, you're starting, you you need those that benchmark to step on that scale and see where you are. And then after that, you need to weigh in. Even if you don't do it every week. Some people weigh in every day. I actually like that. You know, keeping in mind that if you're doing your ministration and stuff like that, it can get thrown off by the extra water weight. Some people don't have water weight. I tend to be one of those people that gain like three, even four pounds during my ministration. It can be very discouraging. So I, I, I still get on the scale around that time. I try not to because I know that it's ministration, water weight. But in my mind, when I've been trying and I've been working out, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. I still feel discouraged. So I usually don't get on the scale around that time. However, the rest of the three weeks I do. Um, or the, whatever. So, and also it's good to weigh yourself because, and I got homework all over the place. It's good to weigh yourself because, you know, like I said, in the beginning, you need that be, to be able to pat yourself on the back. You need rewards. And, and when you get on that scale and you see that two, three, four pounds gone, you know, it really, really motivates you. Now, of course, once you start gaining muscle, it might slow up. But then you pull out the measuring tape. It's, it's not that you want to rely only on the scale to determine your weight loss. You want to look at how your clothes are fitting. You want to look at your measurements. And you want to weigh in. So it's not just one thing. Use all of the resources to determine if you're actually going towards that go, how your clothes are fitting, if they're getting looser, if you want to lose weight, if they're getting tighter, if you want to gain weight, and how much you weigh on the scale as well as your measurements. If you want a waistline, if your waistline is 36 and you're trying to get to that 20, I mean 34, then you use your measuring tape, which I do have, and I've had this for like 15 years. You get get a measuring tape, you measure yourself. Every month, I, I, I say measure every month, weigh once a week. 
and when when you put your clothes on you're you're gonna the clothes is a daily thing depending on what you know how much you get dressed or whatever so let's take a look at how the scale looks so we already see how this thing looks I'm going to give you an update once I actually use it to Ooh, yeah you know it's always so fun giving yourself a treat sometimes instead of just buying things that you eat and you scarf down and you only where you only 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 how you see them is when you uh is when you um you look at yourself but when you spend money on things that are investment like this is investment for me I needed to replace mine so this is how it looks it looks pretty sturdy pretty sturdy and so I'm assuming that once I pull this little red thing here it will start working I'm not gonna step on it now I mean it's freaking two o'clock in the afternoon and I've eaten breakfast a snack lunch and a snack so I'm not gonna step on the scale because what do we know about the mind the mind can be fully aware that there is a logical explanation but once your emotions start talking speaking feeling the mind even though it logically knows I've eaten all day so I'm gonna weigh more if you step on that scale right after you eat you're gonna be like oh god I've gained six pounds it's not your body it's the food that's in your stomach that needs to digest. So please, people, my lovelies, don't get on the scale after you eat unless it's for a specific scientific test you're doing with yourself. If you don't, that will discourage you, even though logically you'll know why you're heavier. To me, it's best to weigh yourself after you have fasted 12 hours at night. So once you eat your last meal, for example, say you eat your last meal at 8 o'clock. If you weigh in at eight or six between 10 and six I mean, 10 and 12 hours so if you eat your last meal at eight and you weigh in at between if you eat your last meal at 8 p.m and you weigh in at about 6 a.m to um 6 8 between 6 a.m and 8 a.m then you'll get more of an accurate reading you, you don't weigh in an hour, two hours, three hours, four hours. I would even suggest you weigh in eight hours unless you just have to. But try to get a fasted weigh in. Weigh in between 10 to 12 hours after your last meal. Then you should get more of an accurate reading because that will give the chance for the fluids to go through your body. And, and another thing, weigh in after you use the bathroom in the morning. Don't have a bladder full of urine. And get on the scale. Weigh in in the buck naked if you can. Or as minimal clothes on as you can. After you've urinated or whatever else you got to do. Get all of the crap out of your body that's ready to go. All of your, you know, whatever is, is ready to come out. And then get on that scale. And that will be your fasted way in. So I'm going to give these things a try. But I would definitely suggest you go to HSN. It is $29.95 and it is for two pieces. And I'm telling you, it, it, they look so sturdy. I haven't tried them, but they look so sturdy. And the shipping is only a little less than $5. So for $35, this was a great buy. I recommend you get it. Get you a measuring tape, which I didn't get this from HSN, but this shouldn't cost that much. Measure once a month, weigh in once a week, and measure your food if at all possible every time you eat, even your fruit. All right? All right, lovelies.